kettle of fish across the pond. We all know American news folk are better looking than ours. CBS News' Katie Couric's got so much MILF appeal, even the cameraman can't help zooming in for a closer look. They're also big characters, and with big characters comes big ego, and with big ego comes big squabble. Take this astonishing showdown between two elder newsmen. So what do you want now? Well, if I have to teach you how to be a reporter, Ollie, I'll do that later. Oh, why don't you do that later, Jim? Uh, I think the lady expressed herself, and uh, you're not here, you're there. Would, is there any question you'd like me to ask her? And no, I'd, I'd, I'll, I'll give you lessons on how to become a reporter later no, I'll on. give you some lessons on how to be an editor, because I was your boss once. Yeah, you were, and are no longer. How did that happen? American cable news is where the biggest characters of all reside. Take silverhead Captain Serious Keith Olbermann here, the portentous liberal showman of MSNBC. He's got an absurd sense of drama which made watching his show during the Bush era a bit like seeing a warm-hearted but angry suburban dad shout over the fence at the bloke next door who just happened to be president. You're a fascist. Get them to print you a t-shirt with fascist on it. Still, in terms of raw drama, the fair and balanced newsmen of dystopian future sci-fi satirical shouty porn sledgehammer channel Fox News win out every time. Fox generally leans more to the right than a man who's just had his right leg blown off, and now Obama's in the White House, their commentators are getting to play the underdog at last. If you believe this country is great, but nobody is fighting for you, let me tell you something. You don't need any guns for this revolution. You just need to stand up and find your voice. Come on, follow me. Well, it's a curious kind of underdoggery where they complain about liberal bias in the media one moment and then brag about their cable dominance the next. Now, to a dumb foreigner like me, all the Fox anchors look like characters in some 80s frat house comedy. Oh, wait, dear. For instance, Sean Hannity here would be cast as the uptight jock bully, witness his cold ink dot eyes which could have been surgically transplanted from a particularly characterless dormouse and his whiny, peevish demeanour. We can't say enemy combatant, we can't say terrorist. We'll get to those things in a second. Now we're not going to use the term illegal immigrant? The disapproving high school principal would have to be Bill O'Reilly, moralising about permissive society one minute. The Woodstock generation thought it was cool to get stoned. And chortling about lady bumps the next. Their pitch is beach friendly, if you know what I mean, and we believe they are patriots. When there's no tits to dribble over, Bill kills time by boasting about his ratings. Judging from our enormous ratings, I think we've been successful in doing that or plugging his myriad books. I do want to thank you all for keeping Bold Fresh on the bestseller list for more than six months. Or simply sitting there pulling a face like a tortoise that's learned to enjoy the stink of its own farts. But his primary characteristic is anger. Bill gets wound up by virtually anything to the left of Mussolini, hectoring and yowling like a wolf that's got his nuts caught on a coat hanger. See, I'm more angry about it than you are. So what about George Bush? What about George Bush? You had nothing to do with it. Although he's clearly not quite as furious as he used to be around 20 years ago when he was presenting a show called Inside Edition, which has become famous thanks to this notoriously unhinged outtake. Now, I can't read it. There's no, there's no words on it. There's no words there to play us out. What does that mean, to play us out? It's, it's Sting is going to do, it's a video, Sting video. What is... For credits. I don't know what that means, to play us out. What does that mean? To end the show? Yeah. Yeah. All right, go, go. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it. Again, five, He's going to blow. Four, he, looks, he looks psychotic. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a... I, I can't do it. God, he, need, he needs a... We'll do it live. This guy needs okay. a goddamn well, blowjob. No. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. Fucking thing sucks! In five, four, three. That's tomorrow and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. Oh, that was uh, fantastic, Bill. Real professionalism, real comfortable viewing, really warm, really uh, connecting with the viewer there. Uh, I... Still, if you think Bill O'Reilly's outrageous, you haven't seen anything yet. This is recent Fox signing Glenn Beck, who at first glance looks like a welcoming, happy kind of chap. He effectively presents his commentary show in the style of a wacky neighbour from a bad sitcom. Although, actually, rather than a sitcom, this is more like an out-and-out -out variety show replete with zany chuckles. You think that's gonna... that ain't gonna happen. 
table-thumping conservative rhetoric. I think this makes a good case to shoot people on the battlefield. Well, you got these guys. We can't keep them in prison because they're not technically uh, terrorists, but they were in terrorist training camps. Mm -hmm. Were they fighting against us? Well, we, they, were, they were in a terrorist training camp. Yeah, I mean, we go in, you shoot them then. And toe-tapping patriotic country music. When I see people on my TV taking shots at Uncle Sam, I hope they always remember why they can. Because we'd all be speaking German or living on the flag of Japan if it wasn't for the good Lord and the man. Anyway, so far you're probably thinking, okay, it's extremely right wing, but it's fairly sane. Mm -hmm. Yes, because Beck isn't just a face of news, he's a bona fide social crusader who started his own post apocalyptic sounding 912 project aimed at bringing the nation together in a spirit of unity and hope and something and stuff. This is the 912 project. Are you ready to be that person that you were that day? After 9-11 on 9-12, I told you for weeks, you're not alone. Now, I don't know if you've seen the superb and prophetic movie Network in which Peter Finch played a news anchor who loses his mind and becomes a ranting, raving, rating smash after sinister bosses leave him on air. I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore! This is basically like that, but crazier and starring Paul Giamatti in a blonde wig. The, the real power to change America's course still resides with you. You are the secret. You're the answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just love my country and I fear for it. And it seems like the voices of our leaders and special interests and the media, they're surrounding us. It is, it sounds intimidating. Or mental. The truth is, they don't surround us. We surround them. This is our country. And now the weather from a talking oven club with a face on it. Hello.